let's put our hands together for our instructors, Pastor Ben Char Dobbins and Frank Dyer. Come on, y'all, give it up for Jazz. Come on. I think this is real Bible study. So thank you for the opportunity to pour into you, to teach you. Before I introduce my partner in crime here, <laughs> uh, Mr. Frank Dyer, first of all, we had the privilege of doing this for a litany of years. I worked for probably a total of 18 years in mortgage. Worked for City Mortgage, City Financial, City Bank, et cetera, as well as Nation Star Mortgage, now Mr. Cooper Home Loans. Before doing that, I was an FA, which is a financial advisor for Morgan Stanley. Let me just say this right off the top. Before we get into this, do this, don't do this, why are you here, et cetera, we're not here to beat anybody down. We're here to partner with you and you accomplishing your financial goals. How many of you have financial goals? Absolutely. Everybody in this room. And sometimes I can teach it more than I can do it. And then sometimes I can do it and it's tough to teach what, what I'm doing because sometimes God will download revel revelation, wisdom, and knowledge. So some of you are not really making as much as you need to make, but somehow it's just working out for you. Can, we, can, can I get a praise in the room? <laughs> and, and, and then some of you, uh, there you, you're in the room and you're saying, you know what, retirement is 10, 20, 30 years down the line and it's starting to get close. Anybody starting to wonder? Are you kind of concerned about? Yeah, okay. I'm gonna give you some quick stats and then I'm going to introduce our expert for the night. <laughs> I asked him, could I do this? Because we're going to tag team this together. I want, I want to make sure I'm giving you the proper stats here. First of all, there are 70,000 millionaires in Dallas alone. And these stats are several months old. This area is blowing up like the world trade for a good reason, though. In the DFW area, that's Dallas Fort Worth surrounding areas, there are over 100 to 110,000 millionaires. Why can't you be the next one? The average millionaire becomes a millionaire by 49 years old. 49. Some of y'all say, I got a little time. I got a little time. Then some of y'all say, uh, I'm, I'm a little late. I'm a little late. Okay. 80%. Uh, and, when and when we say millionaires, what we're talking about is net worth. So sometimes you think in terms of, am I making a million a year? You can be you can have a million dollars in net worth without actually having to make a million dollars. This means this is your real estate, this is your retirement, this is your savings, it's all in one, okay? Now, the way prices are going up right now, you're gonna need to be a billionaire in a minute, right? 80% of millionaires have a bachelor's degree, 80%. This is not to make you feel bad if you did not go to college because 9% of millionaires, this is a study done on over 10,000 millionaires, an everyday millionaire, 9% uh, of them did not have a college degree. 46%, almost half of them, their parents did not go to college. 52% um, had a graduate degree. So some of you who went to grad school, you said, hey, we're going to put it to work. <laughs> but grad school is not what it used to be. Uh, we'll, we'll talk about that later. The two main contributors for becoming a millionaire was staying out of credit card debt and writing your goals down. You don't have to raise your hand, but I want you to think about how much credit card debt you have. These are CNBC national stats, so you don't have to feel embarrassed if you have credit card debt or if you have not written your goals down. You have on your table vision, mission, goals, and initiatives. Now, we're not going to give you everything tonight, but what we want to do is whet your appetite. Vision, what do you see? Mission, what are you trying to accomplish? Goals, what's your... One year, six month goal, three month goal, weekly goal, you need to have financial goals. Initiatives, if you win, if you become a millionaire, who will you help? Who will you sow into? Is it your family, your church, your kid's school? Is it an organization? Is it United Way? Is it March of Dimes? Okay, let me give you a couple more and we're gonna dive right in. The average student loan payment, this is five years ago, used to be $351 used to be $351. That stat is given to you because the stats show that if you graduated college, 
and at age 22 or 23, to $357 and invested it every month off of $35,000, where's the stat come from? The recommended saving investment was 15%. Now most of us are not investing 15% into retirement, but that's the problem. You get the 100% you say, I, that's what I have to live by. No, that's not what you have. You have, to re, you have to talk to yourself in a different manner in order to change the mindset. And they're saying basically, if you were making $35,000 and took 15% of that and invested it, just that amount, you'd have three to four million by the time you're in retirement. A couple more stats and I'm done. 33% have, 33% of millionaires, <laughs> I don't know if I should tell y'all this stat, how many of you think millionaires have to make six or seven figures? Raise your hand. The average millionaire does not make six figures. I won't let that sink in. 33% of millionaires never made six figures in the life of their income while working. One third never made, never, ever, only 31% of millionaires out of ten, a study of 10,000 millionaires actually made over six figures. It's not what you're making, it's what you're doing with what you make. We're gonna talk about this a little bit later. And the reason I'm digging down into this is because this is what a friend of mine told me. As a good, real good friend of mine, Charles Cannon, I can, we've been friends for 20, 30 years. He said, man, there's always fat in the budget. We'll talk about that a little bit later. A couple more stats and I'm done. Only 7% of millionaires actually made over 200,000 a year. Only 18% owned a business. That means 82% did not own a business. Only 15% were actually at senior level positions. And get this, only 7% were C-suite positions. That's COO, CFO, CEO, et cetera. We will talk more into deeper detail. We've got an amazing PowerPoint, but what I would caution you to do is to write down questions, write down thoughts, dig in, drain us of everything possible. I talked to hundreds of thousands, almost millions of customers throughout the litany of my years in mortgage. Most of them could have saved their home from foreclosure if they had an extra $500 each month. I'm, listen, I help him foreclosure, bankruptcy, modification, refinance, repayment plan, forbearance, you name it. We want to help you reach your financial goals. This is why I'm partnering with my big brother, expert. He's a CEO over the Potter's House. He's a living testimony. We get a chance to be in meetings. Listen, he's been from here to several different countries, Africa and beyond. He is an author. We're going to show you a book as well. We got to tag team at City Mortgage. Now we get to tag team. We started around the same time here at the Potter's House. We've seen a litany of people. We have no motives but to see you reach your full potential. Would you give it up for Mr. Frank Dye? Come on. Okay, let's, let's jump into this real quick. Oh, I was going to tell you examples of things that you think about. This is one example, and I can give you tons of them. Uh, when my daughter was born, uh, I worked for Fidelity Investments. We talked about being in financial services. I was in financial services for 18 years as well. All the big boys, including being a Series 7 in Fidelity Investments. When she was born, one of the things I used to do was when people would give her birthday money, right, or we want to give her stuff for toys, I never did that. Toys were for Christmas, right? So when people gave her money, I put it into a brokerage account. I looked at it this morning. We bought Disney and McDonald's at $23 a share. Coca-Cola was at $52 a share. Have you seen what Coca-Cola's at right now? $852 a share. Think about that. So if you, if, you, if, you, if you just think about what we're doing and put it toward the right use, I paid for her to go to Abilene Christian for undergrad, SMU for grad school, and then bought her a new car. She's still got $40,000 sitting in that account right now just from the growth over the year. But we just got to think about it. One, one of my big things is as, as, as a people, 
we need to really just think about the things that we're doing and make really good decisions. And I know it's hard, and we're going to try to give you some examples and kind of talk through some ideas around it. But we've got to make those decisions because at the end of the day, the Bible talks about leaving an inheritance for our children's children. And that's what we ultimately need to do. We need to be prepared to do that kind of thing. That is just so critical. All right, I'm going to officially get to the PowerPoint now. All right. So first off, as a disclaimer, I'm no longer a Series 7. He's no longer in the mortgage world, but we do know some things that can help you. And that's what the ultimate goal is here for us, to just be able to impart some knowledge around finance and just help you all get where you want to be from your financial goals. What is Proverbs 22 and 7? What is that? Anybody have any idea? I know you're going to Google it. Don't Google it. All right. The rich ruleth over the poor, and the borrower is a servant to the lender. I like to say this is a slave to the lender. Yeah, so that's what we're going to look at. One of the things that Pastor Dobbins just said was credit card debt. I'm a storyteller, and you'll figure that out with time. I was living in Boston, Massachusetts. Uh, I was going away to Green Bay, Wisconsin. That's where our headquarters was for Briar's Ice Cream. And I was sitting next to a guy. Shannon Sharp's financial advisor was sitting next to me. And I said, sir, I said, you know, uh, you know, I'm up here. I'm, I was young then. I was young, and I was like, you know, what do I need to do? He goes, fill out this form, send it to me. Back then, it wasn't email. It was snail mail. I'm dating myself, but it's true. Um, he returns it back to me after about three or four weeks, and the first thing he said, you got to get out of credit card debt. You can't do nothing with credit card debt. That's it. You're, you're literally financing your lifestyle with credit cards, right? What does it mean? What does this, what does this mean, literally? Influence and power over those who are economically disadvantaged. When you borrow money, you become, become indebted to the lender. Why financial literacy? Thou shalt love thyself. That, that's, that's the most important piece, and we've got to think about that, right? Financial literacy. It empowers individuals and communities to make informed decisions. Think about this. Think about if you didn't have any debt at all right now and you had to make a decision. Wouldn't it be less stressful to have to think about that five, six, seven hundred dollars a month you've got to make payments? Oh my God. It is uplifting. It fosters a culture of financial literacy, ensuring everyone has the knowledge and tools and confidence to navigate their personal finance, building wealth, and achieving their financial goals. One of the things that we will talk about as well is just talking about consistency. Again, I'm a storyteller. Living in Boston and everywhere else I've lived, I did the same thing. Back in the day, you, you, you couldn't transfer money between banks as easily, but now you can, right? So wh what I did back in the Boston days to set up an emergency savings fund, and we'll talk about that in a little bit, I put it at a whole different bank. I didn't get a debit card for it because I knew, I knew me, and I knew I would use it. So one of the things I tried to do was not do that. So that actually helped me build up the money. And ironically, I started investing in 20th Century Ultra, which was an American Century product back in the day when mutual funds really just started to blow up. And I was able to buy my first house in Boston. Imagine houses, well, it was not a house. I could not afford a house. It was a townhome. Let me get clarity on that. Um, but that, that's what makes it, makes, makes it all work. The question is, how do we get here? How do we get to the place? Pastor Dobbins talked about the debt. He talked about the credit card. He talked about uh, how do we get there? Somebody, as an example, how do we get there? How do we get indebted? How do we get like this as a people? How do we get like this, period? Lack of knowledge. Beautiful. I love it. Greed. Yeah, oh, God, yeah. That has a lot to do with it as well. Yes. Right, right. Exactly. And, and you think about it. One of the things we'll talk about during this month is, is a car as a prime example. I talk about it all the time. Your car should not be worth more than your apartment or your house. But you, people do that. And I'm just like, I just don't understand. I had somebody, <laughs> I won't say who it was, but somebody here says, Mr. Dyer, you're the COO. Why are you driving a 2006 Lexus? I just smiled and said, because it's paid for. <laughs> but, but, but that's it. If you, you find something that's reliable that will let, it's got 266,000 miles on it, and it's still rolling. And it, exactly. It's a, it's a Toyota. It's a fancy Toyota is what it is. So, uh, yeah, that, that part. Uh, what do we got here? Video time. Yes, I got a quick video. How did we get here? This will captivate you on this one. Now, that is the question. How did we get here? How did we get here? Back. Beautiful. 
spending above your means. Do not spend more than you make. That, that's a, so my wife and I did a, uh, we did a panel a couple of years ago, but this, this is her biggest thing, right? So she, my wife's a CFO, so she kind of broke me in too because I was definitely on that path. Uh, yeah, I know, right? Uh, but I think that's one of the keys. And, and it's difficult because you've got to make some difficult decisions, right? You know, one of the things I said on the pre-show some time ago um, is in order to, to not use credit to maintain your lifestyle, you've got to make some difficult decisions. Do you need all eight streaming platforms, right? You know, do, do you need the, the, the new Apple, I don't know, watch phone every time it comes out? No, you don't. Those are the decisions that you have to make. But not just that, but, but everything else in life. You have to make those hard calls. We just talked about the old Lexus. Do you need to have the latest and greatest car every year they come out? No. You find a reliable vehicle that you can drive, and you drive it, and you maintain it. The key is maintenance, right? My father, if he taught me anything else, and my father's in church on Sundays, 86 years, 85. And he used to always tell me, he's like, son, if you take care of your car, to take care of you. I say, yes, sir. And he also said it about wives, too, but I got a second one. I'm taking care of this one. This is better. <laughs> Hold other subject. <laughs> Sorry, I had to slip that in there. <laughs> so credit maintaining lifestyle, that, that, that's, just, that's, that's one of the ultimate things. I mean, we talk about, and, and, I, and I read this just the other day, we talk about all the big brands, right? The Louis Vuitton, the Gucci, the Pucci, the Iarucci. I used that term before. Um, people wear that to look rich. People with money don't wear that. Think about that. that. That's the biggest thing. Who are you trying to impress? When you get sick, they're not going to worry about you. That's one less level of competition in their minds, right? I'm not saying don't buy good stuff. You can still buy good quality stuff. I'm not suggesting that by any means. But don't finance it. Don't buy an item that's $800 and end up paying for it for three years. The cost is no longer $800. Job loss or reduced income. That'll help happen every time. Layoff, pandemic, all that stuff happened. I understand. It happens. But you've got to be ready for it. And the way we get ready for stuff like that is emergency funds. And we'll talk about emergency funds. Accumulating high interest debt. One of the biggest things ever. The key here is one of two, well, a couple of different things. If you've got credit cards now, call them and negotiate your interest rates. Talk, talk to them. They'll listen. If you've been a customer for five years or more, they'll, they'll listen to you. And they may even adjust it. Or better yet, we've got some resources at the end of this presentation that are going to talk about uh, different credit cards and websites that allow you to pick certain better credit cards, as well as picking um, high-yield money market accounts high yield savings accounts, et cetera. Those are the things that you can see, and we've got those resources for you to look at as well. Another big one is here, divorce, splitting assets. I did that, been there, done that. Literally paid for the house, my apartment, child support, and never, I just never wanted to tap my daughter and, and have her feel anything negative, and that's, she ended up saving my life, so I'm glad I did it in retrospect. But uh, you, you've got to think about that. That's a, that's a huge setback, you know? And most importantly, the lack of financial literacy. And I also call it financial comprehension. Literacy is one thing, but I want you to comprehend the little things. Make sure that you have discussions around everything. You know, one of the things that we are, I keep saying we, but you know what I'm saying. One of the things that we are, uh, we're concerned with at times is just having discussions around money. One of the hardest things for me to do was send that, that financial that advisor, my profile, of my, all my credit card debt. That, that just destroyed me because we don't want to share that. But in order to make a change in our lives, we've got to make a change there. We don't like to give blood. Trust me, I've had, to have, have how many pints? Eight pints of, of blood I've had since this whole process is going on. We don't do that. And the, and the thing that's the funniest thing is the whole DNA. Oh, I'm not going to do ancestry. I'm not going to do stem cell because they're going to know where I am. Does everybody here have a cell phone? They know where you are. They know where you live. They know what you drive. They know what you eat. It's all, it's what you speak, it's everything, every, everything that you spend your money on that is there. So something to think about for sure. Thou shalt pay small balances. Okay, by show of hands, how many people have at least four credit cards? I'm not asking for balances, but at least four credit cards. Do they add value to your life? Does that make sense? Okay, so let me give you an example. They do? How does it add value to your life? Yeah. 
That's true. Without a doubt. That, that's where I benefit. So, so uh, the point he's making is, and it's a great point, when you have credit cards for any amount of time, you pay them off, please don't close them. Just don't use them. Because what it does, it, it, it helps your credit score at the end of the day. If I learned nothing else to that divorce, that was that, because I'm going to tell you. Uh, and it, yes, ma'am. Okay. And it helps me because um, I get for, I put certain things on, on them for I don't have to pay any interest because I pay Beautiful. it off within a year. And, Beautiful. And I also pay when I use it, like just a grocery shop or whatever, uh -huh. then I pay it off before the month is Th over That's what with. you do. So I, she, th they're talking exactly what I was going to say. Beautiful. You have a court. Yeah. Uh-oh. There, there has been instances where I've paid off my credit card. Yes. And then since I don't use it, I just let it sit there. Yes. They close it down for me. They will close it down so, for you. But, so but, but before they that do that, affects my score it well. will. But what they'll do is they'll send you a letter first. USA did, did it to me about four months ago. And if they don't send you a letter, you don't need to be with them anyway. Now, how about that? <laughs> so one, one of the things I was going to talk about, and again, great examples by both of them, the credit score, but the other example as well about how she pays it off at the end of the month. One of the things I do when I say, does it benefit you? We have, we call it two household cards. One is for points and one is for miles, right? So th the miles we use for travel, right? So at the end of the day, water payment, gas, all the normal household things, we put on the city advantage card, right? And we get the miles, we pay it off at the end of the month. The other card, when maybe everybody doesn't take MasterCard, I used to work for J.P. Morgan Chase, so that's the J.P. Morgan Chase product that I have. We use that, but we use the points and miles. Examples, for when my daughter graduated, what is your undergrad, uh, we took a Mediterranean cruise, paid for by miles. That's what you do. When we went, uh, graduated high school, I'm going way back now, seems like way back, uh, seems like yesterday actually. Um, we did uh, Times Square. So we did Times Square with the points from my other card. Nothing, I paid nothing, but I paid for food. But other than that, the, the airfare and the hotel was done. Get cards that do something for you, okay? That's what it is. Besides keeping your credit score up, because that's a beautiful thing, but making sure you pay it off every month, because they look at that. Like, I think my average card, the, the one of the best things, and I'm all off script, and I know my admin's gonna be mad at me. Sorry, Tamara. Um, one of the best things, my mom passed away 17 years ago, right? And birthday was just the other day, April 2nd. Um, one of the best things she did, she added me to her American Express account as an authorized user. The best thing ever. Th then I did Texaco. So, so when I was in, at UTA, I went to UT Arlington. When I was at UT Arlington, I go to the Texaco and I buy groceries. And she's like, honey, that, that gas ain't that much. Sorry, mommy, I bought chips, I bought cookies, I bought soda pop. But at the end of the day, that helped me. And I've also done the same thing for my, both of my kids, for that matter, my daughter and my son. All right, let's move forward so I won't get in trouble. All right, thou shalt pay off small balances. This is just an example, and, and this is, would be my suggestion when you have a setup like this. Focus on the one credit card. If you can help it, never pay the minimum balance. Never pay the minimum balance. And once you pay off that first credit card, that $40 payment, apply that to the 157 and pay 197 and keep going till you pay stuff off. You've gotta have a plan, and, and honestly, what uh, Pastor Dobbins said, writing the plan down makes all the difference in the world. All right, let's talk about it even more. Assess your situation. List out all your debts, and some of us may be in denial again on debts, but list out all your debts. The amount owed, the interest rates, just like what you just saw, and attack it from that perspective, okay? Attack it from that perspective. Analyze your debt to income ratio. So buying a home, looking at cars, they've got about eight to 10 different credit scores, right? And these eight to different, 10 different credit, credit scores, I can't talk tonight. Um, this is the way they do it, right? The total monthly debt, which is over your gross monthly income. In this case, your gross monthly income is $10,000 a month. Total monthly debt is 3,000, 0.3 or 30%. And if you're 35% or less, it's considered he healthy debt to income ratio. So those are the things that we've got to really and truly look at. And I would encourage you to just look and kind of analyze that for yourself as you move forward.
get control over your bills and spending. The key, and I know sometimes it's hard because you've already assessed what it looks like in the way you, your lifestyle now, how to live within or below your means. Th that's the ultimate key. We're going to look at something in a minute, uh, the 50-30-20 uh, rule. And, it, and there's a couple of, there's a 70-10-10-10 rule. There's a couple of different rules for budgeting and how you spend money. And still giving consideration to giving. Uh, one of the things I can honestly say since I've been here at the Potter's House and just giving consistently, uh, my life has just turned, turned all the way around. And, and again, thank God for it because he's healed the brother. So I can't say nothing but just goodness for him. Um, the key, though, live below or within your means. We've got to stop with the credit cards. That's the key. So by show of hands, this is another show of hands thing. How many people have credit cards that are department store credit cards? Okay. So I would ask the same question, what do they do for you? I mean, I think maybe they can do something, but what do they do for you? Are you able to pay them off monthly at times? Most of them. And, and I think that's the most important thing. The disadvantage that I see with those type of credit cards is the fact the interest rate is so high. I mean, they're, they're approaching 30% now. And that's the crazy part. So what you do, there's a, there's a what's it called, bank rate? Oh, God, I forgot. Yeah, bankrate.com, there it is. If you look at that, and it's, it's in one of the resources at the end, too. Bank rate will actually allow you to look at credit cards. It'll allow you to look at CDs. It'll allow you to look at savings accounts. And it compares all the best things in the country. And it allows you to find those rates that are actually better for you. That's the one. I, I, I use it all the time. I, I literally use it all the time. Managing your finances. Download a sample budget spread, spreadsheet. There's a couple of them out there. Nerd Wallet. Again, there's some other resources at the end, and I'm sure you'll take pictures of that. Excel. And create a budget. That has got to be the most important thing that you can do is creating a budget. Now, some of us are in denial. I get it. I've been in denial as well. Um, now, I, I, I won't say I'm that good, but I, I almost have the budget in my head. I know when I can and cannot spend money on because, again, I'm married to a CFO that will throw something at me otherwise. Um, a bud is telling your money where to go instead of wondering where it went. How many of you guys are like, oh, where did it go? Jesus. I was talking to a young man the other day, and he goes, oh, Mr. Frank, I'm out, I was out balling the other day on the weekend. I said, so how much you spent? Well, I got a table service, and how much was it? It's about 1500 I said, did you pay cash for it? He said, no. I said, hmm. So you're going to be paying for that 1500 for about a year. So is that 1500 really going to cost you about 3500 Oh, I didn't look at it that way. That's the key. We, we, we've got to make good decisions just because you, let's step back to credit cards. Just because you, and I'll use the example of $10,000. Just because you have $10,000 in your credit card, don't use $10,000, okay? Ideally, the bank will never tell you this. Ideally, don't use more than 30%. If you use more than that, it's going to negatively impact your credit scores. The thing about credit scores, and we've said this a thousand times over, we'll keep saying it again. The credit scores impact everything we do. Your mortgage rates, your insurance rates. There are so many other things that it can impact just based on the credit score. That's why it's so important to manage it. Ideally, this country is one of the few countries that does that, right? So you look at mortgages and so forth. Looking in Nairobi, looking at some other places that we travel, I go and I look at the homes, even in, in, in Saudi Arabia and Dubai. They don't do mortgages like we do. They just pay it off. We're one of the few. This is, a, to me, it's a manufactured system almost to put you in more debt. So that's why you've got to manage it. You've got to grasp it and run with it. We can't continue to fall prey to what they're doing. An example, uh, this, is a, this is a medical example. The medicine that I take here in the U.S., there's two medications that I have to take probably for indefinitely. One is $18,000 a month. The other is $12,000 a month. If I go to Mexico or Canada, it's less than $100. Same medication, same manufacturer, same everything. I can get a three-month supply for less than $100. That's the killer part. Yeah, just, I need to phone a friend in Canada. That's what I need to do, yeah. So just, it, again, it's just critically important. No, credit score is critically important. Investing is critically important. Doing just an analysis of whatever you're looking to do is critically important. Don't just automatically do it just because I got it available. Just don't do it, okay? Again, this is just the beginning. We've got 
three more weeks, and we're going to keep rocking and rolling and trying to drop you guys some nuggets to help you go where you want to do. Does anyone know what the 50, 30, 20 budget rule is? The calculator. You do? Yeah. Yes. You're right on point. So 50% is, for, and she kind of went through it all. I know you probably didn't hear her, but she went through it exactly where it's supposed to be. 50% is uh, for needs, right? So needs is everything, the utility bills, the rent, uh, health care, groceries, et cetera, right? 30% is for wants. And wants could be subscriptions. We just talked about that. Supplies for hobbies, restaurants, meals, vacations. To me, that 30% is where you have your wiggle room. That's where your wiggle room is. So at the end of the day, if you can do that, you can turn around and increase the 20% for savings and debt repayment, right? So talking about debt repayment, talking about that. How many of you guys, by show of hands, have 401ks at your job? How many are contributing m at least a matching amount to the 401ks at your job? Excellent. How many people in the room have IRAs or brokerage accounts? Why am I even standing up here? Y'all already got it going on. At least, okay, okay. So, so, so you, you're well on your way to doing the right things. One of the things that I love now is they have, uh, what do they call it? I call it a makeup amount that you can give, an additional $7,500 a year in your IRAs. Take advantage of that stuff. That, 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 take advantage of that. It's a, so my students, I'm also an adjunct professor. I always tell them short-term pain, long-term gain. And that's what this is at the end of the day, because as we get older, what I'm not, and I don't like to use that word, as we mature, <laughs> I'll use that word instead, uh, as we mature, we want to make sure that we're comfortable. I, I don't want to have to go up and be a greeter at Walmart. Ain't nothing wrong with it. If I get a discount, I'll show enough to do it. But I'll choose not to if I don't have to. So the question is, which one of those is do you think is the most important? Hmm. Okay, show of hands, 30. 30%. Show of hands, 20%. Come on. 20% it is. Because that's going to allow you to get where you need to be. Right? It's going to allow you to get where you need to be. And that is debt free. I'm telling you, to make a decision and not having debt is the most relaxing thing in the world. It's like, oh, I think I'm going to go to Cancun. I was like, okay, let's go to Cancun. I'm like, oh, it's too expensive this month. It's cheaper that month. We'll go that month. And then do it. Get your miles for it. Use American Airlines vacation. Get miles that way. Then use your American Airlines Admirals Club, uh, what do you call it, the card. Get miles for that way. I got enough for another trip that quick. That's the way you do it. And the hotel, too. Yes, ma'am. Come on. You are. Come on and help me teach this thing. Southwest? No? How about spirit? Let's go with some spirit. Uh, so wait a minute. So, so I'm all about a story, right? I'm all about it. So my my cousin has got to be, my cousin has been doing amazing for probably 25 years, right? Five kids, amazing home. He only flies Spirit. He he is the millionaire next door. I'm telling you. That's why. That's why he's the millionaire next door. His daughter plays volleyball in, in for Florida, somewhere in Florida, and his wife is down there every week to watch the game. But he's like Frank. Well, they call me Little Frank. Little Frank. She can fly round trip to $59. I'm like, dude, you might as well buy a house down there. Good God. Yeah, that's true. Good point. Yeah, the fees that get you. They, they only take a backpack on there with them, they say. All right, so this is what I've been talking about the whole time. A savings and emergency fund. How many people currently have a savings and emergency fund right now? Show of hands. How many people have at least six months of money in that account? Beautiful. That is the most critical piece of everything because what you don't want to do, because I'm going to tell you, life happens, right? What you don't want to do is dip into credit card debt trying to cover an issue. You have a card breakdown. When I came home from the hospital, it was 114 degrees outside, and the AC unit downstairs shut off. Oh, yeah, it was hot. 
And going upstairs, heat obviously rises, so I found the nearest hotel, and I called the guy to fix the air C unit. Well, I didn't even call the insurance. I should have called the insurance probably. I, uh, I, look, I, the, la the last thing I wanted after being in a hospital at 65 degrees the whole time was to be in a 100-degree house. So we talked about this, and again, we talked about the resources that are available. To do your savings account or brokerage account for the emergency fund. You want your emergency fund to make as much money as humanly possible, right? So, and, and understand that even if you do this, there may be tax implications to it because it's going to make a little bit more money. But let me tell you, at the end of the day, Marcus by Goldman Sachs, we actually use that and we have money stashed there and we're making a, a good, a, a literally annually, probably a good salary, a, a minimal salary, on money that's saved in there because of the rates they give you. Allied Bank, Synchronicity, SoFi, and the credit unions. Look for high yield savings accounts. Uh, Fidelity Investment has them, uh, Vanguard, all the big boys all have them. What does that mean, Tiffany? I mean, what does that mean? <laughs> Tamara, what does that mean? 30 minutes? Hey, she owed me. <laughs> okay, I guess so. I got, that's what I felt like. I'm like, am I fighting somebody? What's going on? Uh, oh, so Research the best rates on savings products. Again, I mentioned bank rate, bankrate.com. That is definitely the best place to find them. I'm not selling anything. I go there all the time and I direct people there all the time. You know, I think places like that, things like Consumer Reports, I'm a fanatic about because they don't take money for advertising. These people may, but you still get all the rates. You get all the rates across the country and you get a good feel for wh where the win is every single time, right? Big one, pay yourself first. When you get paid, set aside money for you. Again, I'm a storyteller. I got that from my boss, I can't help who I am. Uh, what I do, every two weeks I get a check, I put $100 in the J.P. Morgan Chase. The rest of the money goes in the bank, the regular, Bank of America. But that $100 is what I pay, for, pay, pay myself with because everything else is investments or bills or just sits there in, in a high yield money market account or it goes to a brokerage account for mutual funds, or it goes other places. Treat your savings account like an important bill. Pay it every single month, every single month. You've got to do it, right? I, I know you want to go out and get the latest bag or the latest phone. The phone, the firmware, if, if, if firmware can update a car, it can show enough, update a phone. So I need y'all to just rock with me on that one. Put, it in, put your money in savings before paying your bills and start saving early. I talked about the example of my daughter. I'm going to tell you, she got it down too good. So what she does now, she has all this money saved in the brokerage account. She has this money saved in Chase and Bank of America. But when anything pops off, whose credit card does she use? You got it. That's my baby. So, but, but she wins because she didn't save daddy's life. So she got a little grace right now. <laughs> so I'm going to let her work on grace for now. And then we're going to have to have this discussion maybe around Christmas time. <laughs> but yeah, that, that's important. But start saving early for them. Open up custodial accounts for them. Start putting the money in there and make it work for them. That's the key. And you can do the same thing for you. We talk about emergency funds. We talk about Roth IRAs. We talk about brokerage accounts. We talk about 401ks. Maximize that. Take full advantage of everything you got. Because at the end of the day, a lot of people, at least our, our, our parents and our great-grandparents, were relying on the government. We don't know if the government money is going to be there for us. Think about that one. So we got to be ready. We got to take care of ourselves. You don't have no idea what's coming. That, that's the key. And, and I keep saying that, and, and I'm going to do a little plug here. When I say take care of ourselves, that means also with our health, right? What I've been through. The thing about stem cells that I talked about earlier, sickle cell impacts who the most? Stem cells can stop, eliminate sickle cell. Did y'all know that? That's why I encourage everybody to do it. They're not going to tell you. They're going to put you on a drug. No. Let, most recently, UT Southwestern is where I've been going. They have a program now where they're using stem cells to stop or eliminate sickle cell. I'm going to tell people all day long to do that because that's the most important thing, our health. Go to the doctor. Everybody's, everybody, literally, every, if you've got med, uh, co medical coverage, you can get a free physical. Get a free physical. If I hadn't got the free physical, I wouldn't have found the stuff I found that got led me to where I am today. But get a free physical every year. It's a full-blown thing. 
Savings and emergency funds. All right. We're going to say, talk about these things a couple of times. Emergency sh funds should cover three to six months of unexpected living expenses, which we've already established. Food, housing, car, mates, car payments, and utilities. And hopefully you've got a cash car. If you don't have a cash car, it's low enough where you can make a difference. Muy importante. That's my Spanish for the day. Um, what if you got a job loss, medical bills, my God, disability, major car repairs? That's what it's there for. The other thing that's not mentioned here is the flexible spending account. So for me, I max out my flexible spending account. It's money taken out of your account before you get paid, before taxes, and I've used that to pay most of the bills. So I'm, I mean, I'm, I've got to get rid of all that money the last two years I've gotten rid of, and I've got $500 left already. But the key is when, when they offer you stuff like that that you can take advantage of, take advantage of it. Ask questions. Understand what it looks like. The other thing that I think is also important, a whole different subject, life insurance. How many of you have life insurance outside of your companies? Beautiful. That's what I'm talking about. Outside of your companies. That's important. Have it there, too, but have it outside as well. What does having a healthy relationship with money do? I think the biggest one for me was reducing stress. The stress of paying those bills every month will wear you out. Because every single thing you do, you've got to give consideration to that, right? Other things, financial security, obviously. It allows you to do more things. Greater freedom and flexibility. Improve mental and emotional well-being, because it'll drive you crazy. Generational impact, which is a huge thing. How many people have LLCs right now? Beautiful. How many people have trusts right now? Something to think about. So we're in the process now. We've got this second home that's going up, and it's like we need to start putting stuff under those things to make sure that we're covered. So if something does happen, everything is there. Then go to probate, and they take 20%, and they mandate people to do this, that, and the other. It's a racket, too, as far as I'm concerned. Reduces stress, we talked about. Long-term wealth accumulation. Some people do it in the market. Some people do it in real estate. Some people do it in their job. But th the ultimate key is to be able to do it. So I just need you guys to focus on just that part. Lifestyle fulfillment. At the end of the day, right, at the end of the day, from a lifestyle fulfillment perspective, we talked about Cancun. That ain't, that ain't the Mediterranean. It ain't nothing more big. But to be able to just step away for four or five days and be pampered is everything. I haven't been able to get on a plane in, in, in almost a year now. I can't wait to go to Cancun. And they got a, whew, whew, Jesus. <laughs> I can't wait. I, I just, you know, I don't need a lot. You know, I ain't got to do a lot. And knowing me, I'll still work anyway, because I always do. But uh, just to have somebody say, Mr. Dyer, would you like this? Yes, I would. Bring it on, brother. So... Take control of the day, right? So again, I, I talked about it. We're going to have three more amazing opportunities to talk about financial literacy throughout the month. Uh, this is just the first step and just really the ground rules of some of the things you should be doing at a bare minimum. Taking control of the day, understanding your values and goals. You've got those in front of you now. Educate yourself. You know, a lot of people talk about I don't know, Bitcoin, they talk about mutual fund. Whatever it is, don't just listen to the internet. Don't listen to Instagram and TikTok. Go look at us for yourself, okay? That, that's, that's, that's the key. Unfortunately, what people often say is if you want to hide something from us, put it where? In a book. There it is. Create a budget. It's difficult. It's painstaking in the very beginning, but it'll pay off long term. Practice mindful spending. Do you really need the Maserati? Or will a nice Honda Accord EX do? It starts, it runs, it looks pretty good, and it gets you to A to point B. And when, you, when it breaks down, it's $129 versus $1,299. Come on. Build an emergency fund, critically important. Practice gratitude and, and an abundant mindset. You've got to be grateful for just everything God has allowed us to do. I know I'm extremely grateful. And I hope you all are as well. You're here on a Wednesday night. You're trying to get this knowledge. And we just want to impart as much as we can on you to make a difference in your lives as best we can. And most importantly, seek professional guidance. 
this is a tip, but I tell you what, at the end of the day, I would encourage you to definitely do that and just get a feel for what it looks like. It could be at your bank. It could be, and this is the key, right? They're going to always try to sell you something, but you vet them. You, you talk to them. Make sure they understand where you're going and where you want to go. You vet them and get a better understanding for them. It could be Chase. It could be Bank of America. It could be Vanguard. It could be Merrill Lynch. It could be anybody. The good thing is now, for those brokerage accounts and those who don't have them, you can open them free now. There's no cost involved with them. And as a matter of fact, they also give you guidance free. Another key, they give you free guidance. And they'll set up calls with you, and they will keep you honest on what you need to do. The additional resources we talked about, that's the page for the pictures. Go ahead. <laughs> I know it's coming. Bang Rate, Entrepreneur Money and Finance, Susie Orman, U.S. News, McField Personal Finance Essentials. A uh, couple of them there. Those are some of the things you look at. Those are some of the things we, you want to rock with and just get a better understanding. As I mentioned, we're going to go through a lot more of this stuff and get into deeper detail as we go throughout the month. Um, but this is, this is, again, this is just the beginning. This is an area that both Pastor Dobbins and I are just passionate about. We've been into it almost 40 years together uh, and ironically work together. I think that's so hilarious. Um, but I just love it, and I love trying to share that. Like I said, God left me here for a reason, and I don't know if this is the reason or not, but whatever it is, we're going to find it out, and we're going to keep pushing on because I love, I love it. Thank you, guys. Come on, y'all can do better than that. Let's dive right in. Uh, actually, let's highlight the book as well. We have a book that is actually in our cafe. Is it the book? The book? Okay, I got you. I got you there. Can we give it up for Mr. Dye, who's an author? Uh, uh, let's get the oh name God. of the book here. I got it wrong. Yeah. It's in there. Oh, geez. Let's go to page 136 of the book. No. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's no. called The Entrepreneurial Guide for the Christian Leader. You guys can pick this up in the cafe. Now, this is about you. We want to dive in. We want to get as yeah. many questions answered as possible. Some things that I'll throw out there. Yes. S remember, seven out of ten millionaires, net worth-wise, never made over six figures. No matter where you are in this room, it's possible. It is possible. Top three occupations for millionaires. Accountants, engineers, and teachers. And, and why is that? The question is, why is that? The reason? Consistency. They consistently invest. They consistently put their money in savings. When I say auto, auto draft stuff, do it. Hide it from yourself. Literally, you know it's there, but you're kind of hiding it from yourself. Consistency wins every time. I, I know, again, a lot of folks do Bitcoin. Instant gratification is going to kill us as a people. We need to stop that. Instant gratification is going to kill us as a people. Go ahead. No, you, you're good to go. <laughs> we want to take questions, yes. answers. It, it could be anything. From Dow Jones and Nasdaq, S and P, you name it, absolutely. And we'll, and I'm sorry, go ahead, Jasmine. You, no, you're fine. I'm flowing you, with you. We'll, we'll take questions I'll, I'll from the survey, as well as what's it, we want to honor also those in the room, absolutely. And if you could just project, if you could stand and just project, so everybody can hear you. Thank you. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, so what if we wanted to invest, but we just don't? I don't know how to read NASDAQ. You know, I've gone into programs, I don't know how to read it. I, that's my issue. I just don't know how to choose what stock, yes. I don't know when to choose it, you know, how much to put in there. Yes, I love it. You wanna start and I'll finish? Done deal. All right. uh, my brain is running like 800 miles an hour. Basics. He's a 25 year old, I told you that. <laughs> Dow Jones, Dow Jones is your top 30 blue chip stocks. Your top 30 most traded stocks, that's Dow Jones. Dow came from 1896. There's a guy named Charles Dow. Uh, Charles Dow basically used to get this. It's Dow Jones in DJIA, Dow Jones Industrial Average. It used to be the Dow Jones Transportation Average. They used to base this, Dick and Pinson, based upon the transportation in the 1800s, locomotives, railroads, because that was going to tell you how much product or GDP, gross domestic product, was actually going to sell within the United States. Dow Jones top 30. NASDAQ. NASDAQ is going to uh, deal with your tech stocks and other stocks. This is started in 1971. That's the National Associated Association of Securities and Dealers 
uh, automated quotes. So these are your tech stocks and other stocks, which are really driving the market with AI. Anybody heard of artificial intelligence? Okay, S&P 500. S&P 500 is your top 500 stocks. Russell 2000, those are, Russell 3000, basically are your 3000 stocks with the New York Stock Exchange and the market. Russell 2000 is your bottom tier 2000 small capitalization stocks. Now, where am I going? Look at earnings per share. Look at basic things like Chipotle. Look at things like, now, nah, this is informational purposes. I have a litany of stocks that I invest in. Part of my story is that I used to take $10, $20 per paycheck. I was broke as a joke. We had four kids, four boys, big boys, all my height and beyond, trying to feed them and just take care of things. God blessed me to take $10 a paycheck, $20 a paycheck, consistency. I looked up, I said, oh, I got 10,000 in this account from just $10.20, $10.20, and 20, you know, investing every paycheck. Then I bumped that up to $100, then $1,000. And then we, we were, during the pandemic, my wife said, babe, what, what are you doing? Because we weren't here at church. I'm usually busy at church. She's like, she said, babe, you're in there gambling. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm studying earnings per share. Study earnings per share. Things like Chipotle, which used to be two, three hundred, four hundred dollars then it went up to $1,000 or more. Uh, NVIDIA, look at NVIDIA. I'm just giving you, just put this, uh, N-V-D-I-A, NVIDIA. Uh, it's, they own the cuffs. I bought NVIDIA at two, $245. It's almost, it's $978 now. You can buy it on Cash App, Robinhood, Stockpile. These are all free, free, free 99. Cash App. Robinhood, Stockpile, absolutely free. Now, I recommend you can go with a financial advisor. They're going to charge you a little bit more. I used to be an FA. You can go with uh, Wells Fargo. You can go with City. You can go with Chase. You can get, go with Smith Barney. You can go with Charles Schwab. You can go with so many different financial institutions. You can go with Northwest Mutual. I've, I've, I got a litany of accounts. The key is once you learn basics yourself, what I used to do, so I don't want to be long with what I used to do is put $10 in. When my $10 went to $11.30, and when my $10 went to $12, I was like, babe. She said, boy, get out of here. <laughs> I said, no, no, you don't understand. When my $10 goes to $12, that's 20%. You got to think percentage-wise. That's why Mr. Dye is telling you 50%. You should be able to live off of 50% of your income, or you need to move back in with your mama. Bingo. I, I want to, or she live with you. No, I love it. I love it. Because at a certain age, many of us are going to have to take care of our parents. Because some of you are going to say, oh, I'm good. I got 800 questions. Okay, good. Now, if your mama die or your, or your father die, can you live? If you have to pay for a funeral, can, I mean, we, we do 400 plus funerals a year. Can you take care of you and all of your siblings? That's why one of the things on your table is called initiatives. What will you do if God blesses you? And how will you handle the leadership of your entire family? Look in terms of percentage. Your paycheck, if you make $1,000 per week, that's $52,000 a year. I'm just going to give you basics. This means... Out of my $1,000 paycheck, $500 is going to go to my bills. $300 is going to go to my wants. What are my wants? That's my hair. That's my nails. That's my suit. That whatever I want to buy. $200 is actually going to go directly to savings. Do not touch it. Set up a percentage where it is automatically deducted. Yeah. Right. Automatically. That's it. That way I looked up and I was like, okay. I could just, okay, I didn't agree with my son's decision on college, but hey, I could take this account, knock it out here. I should have did some other things. That's a whole nother. 529, study 529 if you got kids in college. That's the best thing to do. I did it backwards because I made money on the stock market. So earnings per share is your key. Look at Google, look at Microsoft, look at your basic top stocks. Sorry. No, no, you're fine. That's this. <laughs> I, I get geeked, I'm sorry. He's very geeked, back. but he's very right. So one of the things I truly believe in, I, I mentioned before with my daughter, McDonald's, Disney, do things you know. Yeah. And, and with you in particular, if you open up a, a brokerage account somewhere, and they're, they're free to open, right? And he's right. Some of the advisors will charge you, but a lot of them will not. Find it a good index fund, right? A good index fund. And follow suit with the index fund. There's a, there's a couple of great opportunities to do that. Uh, but find funds that, that you believe in. They've got a little bit of everything out there now. And just research it. What you'll, what you'll normally do if you go to, uh, I keep saying Fidelity because I used to work there, but go to Fidelity, you find a fund, and, and, and just look at the funds and look at the top 10 stocks they hold. That tells you everything about the stock. Like, for instance, I don't have, I, I don't have a lot of the individual stocks. I do have some, but I have a lot of the individual. But the, but the mutual funds I hold 
hold a lot of those stocks I want, right? The Tesla, I got Tesla. But Tesla and all the other people like that, a lot, you'll see what they have. The top 10 is everything. So, good. Uh, I want to give a basic. Does everybody know what a mutual fund is? A mutual fund is a compilation, oh, yeah. a conglomerate good question. of multiple funds. Yes, multiple stocks. Or, multi, excuse me, yeah, multiple yeah, yeah, stocks got, and got, securities. Yeah. Okay, ETF, exchange traded fund. Okay, so what we're looking at is a conglomerate of stocks put together. Therefore, the experts say we're going to call this the whatever ETF. They're going to take the top stocks that they think that will perform and you can invest in them. I looked at our portfolio here at the Potter's House. We we're extremely blessed. I'm at 22% this year. So that 22% would just be sitting. Now I got 22% this year just upon money that I made from my 401k. Funds are a conglomerate of stocks. We'll take as many questions as possible. Cause Yes, ma'am. Yeah, Let's go. I have a question about the 529s. Um, every time I get a grandchild, I get a 529. However, they're not really doing much. And a lady approached me about a UIL or UEL. Yes. Should I transfer that and get that or get a mutual fund? And would that be better than a 529? I don't want to give you legal advice. I got some experts in the room who do UIL, universal life insurance, and then some people do infinite banking. Uh, 529 for me was a little slow, but they've made some changes here in Texas with 529. It is just safe. Let me just say it's safe and it's flexible. You have to figure out what's making the most money for you. Let me give you my mistakes as well. Some of my mistakes is a house around the corner. I said, babe, let's get this house. She was like, eh, eh. I was like, yo, this is years ago. I was like, the house is only 179. I'm going to pitch 165 and we'll settle for 170. We didn't get the house. I looked up the house was half a million dollars. The house behind us, um, I wanted to get the house more. I said, eh, it's not really a true five, five bedroom. It's a, she's picky. She's upstairs teaching. So y'all, if she comes, y'all <laughs> lock the door. I was like, babe, we need to get it. I just have a hunch. I just, I'm going to see. I got this hunch. Um, it was probably 279 or so. I was like, yo, babe, let's, let, let's piss 250. We'll get it for 265. We're good to go. That house is now, was 895 or so. So I'm giving you mistakes as well. So you have to study and flow, and you have to move quick when you need to move, but do that with expert advice. Come on, as many questions as possible. Is a retirement fund, I I'm right here. You. I can't, oh yes ma'am, I'm so sorry. Is a retirement fund better than an ORP? ORP, explain what an ORP it's is. It's an mentioned. optional retirement program that okay. is offered by some employment. Yeah, th site. those are different, uh, let me just say SEP, uh, self-employment plan and pension. ORP is more of a smaller one. Um, I think you have to see what's best for you. Let me give an example. Now here I'm using the Potter's House for example because what I flipped my fund to is I made 22% this year on my 401k. Your company is only going to basically, pardon my verbiage, um, offer you 401ks and mutual funds based upon the companies that they're basically in bed with or business with. So a friend of mine taught me, we used to have an investment group years ago. I was in like fresh out of college. We put like $500 in per month, but we weren't disciplined. We were young, crazy, and you know, we had a good plan, but we just didn't all get along. That's a whole other story. My friend kept it, and he, I looked up. He had $200,000, then $500,000. He said, man, the best thing is for you to study, do your own research, and create your own fund. You can do that with your own account. That's why I'm giving you cash out, Robin Hood stockpile. I'm not saying invest the bank. Use a little bit, test it, and then you yep. develop a rhythm. Yep. Uh, the next thing that I'm really getting ready to dig in on, into is options as well. You can make money whether the stock goes down or up. I'm not telling you to invest uh, <laughs> riskily. That's it. Frank had to balance me out here. I'm a jumper. I like to jump in. You know. So if you opposites attract. How many y'all married? Good, good. Okay. So so one of you gonna be like, let's do it. Then some of you like, ah, I don't know. Balance. Balance. Look at the plans. I had a friend who's a four. You got 401k. You got 457 B plan. You got 403 uh, B plan. You have to look at it because a friend of mine who was having issues that he needed to take money out, he couldn't do it out of his teacher's retirement because there were certain penalties. Then you had to prove you got taxes passed due, or you got a, or you're looking at a down payment. So look to make sure. I'm not saying you should borrow from your income, but I know what it's like to borrow from my 401k. Oh, my, I'm the only one here? I wish y'all would. <laughs> I know it's like to borrow from my 401k and then pay myself back interest. I'm like, whew, glad I paid off this loan. Okay, sorry. Any more? We have one. I, oh, I'm sorry. I have a whole life policy. 
And I just recently found out that we could actually borrow against it. Um, but I want to dump into it. So how much can I dump into it without them claiming it to be almost like um, a um, traditional or Roth IRA, you know, where I had to pay taxes on it? Uh, Brian, let's talk about the Mac law. I, I don't know that I would dump more into it. There was, a, I mean, you could do that. Me personally, I would take that invest differently, but but I know you're trying to gain, most times you need to really up that coverage. Am I, as a, you, most times you didn't really need to up that coverage. So if it's a $500,000 plan, you might want to up it to 600, you're gonna benefit more. I, I have an account with uh, Northwest Mutual where you can do the same thing. Get with that advisor as well and see what some of those fees look like as well. Every time, I'm not saying that you have to go out and be an expert and make all these mistakes, but every time you partner with somebody like me, if I work for Morgan Stanley, my bonus is based upon how I convince you to invest and how many trades you make, because that's how I eat and feed my family. When I work the city mortgage, if the more homes that I save to help you out of foreclosure and bankruptcy, that's how much money I made. So I've been on both sides so, of it. So I love it. You, you were saving them, and I was taking them. <laughs> well, you know, sometimes we have REO. That's real estate. On. Yeah, now, let, let's be honest. In this room, I, I, don't want, I don't want you to be scared. Some of you are in bankruptcy in this room. Some of you are in foreclosure in this room. We're here to help you. Ask the questions, really. Ask whatever you want to ask. And if we don't know, we'll get, get you the information so you can. That, that, to me, is the most important piece of everything. Yes, my okay. sister. We'll come back to you, Candice. Yes. yes. Thank you so much, um, Pastor Benchard, and also Pastor. I'm so sorry. No, that's Pastor Di. That's oh, Pastor. I'm sorry. Uh -huh. Pastor Di. Okay. Well, I appreciate y'all yeah. for being able to spread the knowledge and when financial literacy, because you know our people need it. Yes. And here I'm able to, you know, want to spread, you know, um, not only my business, but I want to be able to give any of y'all that are needing any type of, you know, financial guidance, because I'm actually a licensed financial agent here in the Dallas area, alongside with my mom. She, you know, she's in meetings right now, so I'm here for her in spirit, right? Uh, but we're here to help you on either life insurance, investments, or even 401k rollovers. You know, I know some of y'all mentioned that, you know, you want to, um, I don't know exactly what, what is it right? But um, it was uh, based on 401ks. But like I mentioned, I'm only a licensed agent in life insurance, but my coach is investment licensed, like Sir, um, I'm so sorry. Frank, Frank Dyer, yeah, Frank, there you Frank, go. Yeah. Like you, right? And I'm also in the process of doing that. And I'd love to be able to get a free, I'd love to give y'all a one-on-one -on -one free consultation, whoever's in need of it. And of course, if y'all are, you know, ready to take those financial steps, because, you know, we Let's talk help. a little later. I want to be sure that we vet it out. I think you could be yeah. extremely legit. I just want to make sure we vet it out. Yeah. Possibly, but thank you for partnership because this is what real community is about. Yeah, exactly. I've seen a lot of people come to this church. I might watch them for a while. And I said, you know what? That brother's legit. And then we start partnering on something. So thank you for that. I do have one from the QR code. Absolutely. And they're asking, how do you pay a mortgage up front? They thought this idea was ridiculous, but listening to you all makes it sound possible. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to jump right in. Frank will have to pull me back. Go ahead, go ahead. You're First good. of all, you should never pay it. You should never get a 30 year mortgage. Never. You should never get a 30-year mortgage. You can get a 15-year mortgage. You can get an 11-year mortgage. You can get a 7-year mortgage. You can get a 3-year mortgage. Oh, you can just pay it off. Or you can just pay it off. There you go. Now, if you have a 30-year mortgage, what you can do is called the accelerated program. They will fight you on it, and I know many of you already have a mortgage, and you say, I didn't sign up for this program. Yep. Call, ask to speak to the manager, the AV, I used to be AVP, the VP, the C. Keep asking until they get you in the accelerated program. What this does, let's just say your mortgage is $2,000 a month. Instead of you paying $2,000 every 30 or 31 days, you're going to pay $1,000 every 14 days. Does that make sense? Same money, same $2,000, but every time you pay it every 14 days, it attacks the principal. It takes you from 30 years to 23 years. Actually, it can take you from 30 years to 22 years and eight months. Let me tell you something. We work for Morgan. Let me, we used to go around the, the, we used to laugh. Well, this is bad. We used to laugh. We were kids. We were young. At, at the, the highest interest rates, we've seen a 20, I had, I found one that was 17% mortgage rate. Then I found one that was 22%. My buddy, Jacob Gonzalez, found one, he, he found one that was 25% mortgage. 
accelerated program. They will know what you're talking about where you can pay it bi-weekly instead of once a month. If you have a 15-year mortgage, it'll take it from 15 years to 11 years in about eight months or sometimes 12 years in three months depending on how it was structured. You can pay your mortgage off. Now, I don't want to start getting into we could uh, pulling equity out of your home with a HELOC and paying it out, but I, that's we'll, we'll, that's a HELOC is a home equity line of credit, but that's that's next class. Well, well, my bad. I'm, I'm getting a little excited. Let's go. I want to help people. I'm sorry. We do have another question. Is it a good idea to pay off debt with a loan? It depends on the interest rate. If, if, if I could pay off some debt with a lower interest rate, then I'm going to do that all day long because I'm trading. How much are credit card rates? 29%, 28%, 25%. Yeah. It depends on, you know, some, some good ones might be 17, 18, 19%. And sometimes you actually used to could be able to pay it off. I mean, you could write it off, excuse me. You could write off the, the, the loan, the consolidation loan. I would always check with your accountant to make sure that's possible. If that's possible, it, it would make sense. But if it's not possible, it may not be worth it. One of the questions I got asked, we were on Wednesday night Bible study with Brother Tubman, and the question was, do I, do I invest or do I pay off my loans? And I, my, my question to him was simply, what is the rate at what your, your loans or your debt, are, debt is at? He was like, 23%. I'm like, you're not going to beat 23%. You need to pay that off, and then you come back again. You can do both, but it just depends on where it is, right, at the end of the day. Cost of, <laughs> Cost of money, my brother. That's exactly what it is. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So for that accelerated program, do you have to go through your mortgage company to do that, or can you do that on your own? Can you just split your payments on your own? These days you, you can actually go online and do it on your own, but it is always better to get it with your mortgage company. Right, because they'll, they'll apply it somewhere else. That's what exactly. they'll do. Yes, they'll apply it somewhere else. It's called suspense funds and yeah. unapplied yes. funds. You may not see it, but as a former banker, we used to see unapplied funds. We'd be like, if the customer knew that we didn't even apply this money. The other thing is on quickly on refinances. The reason why people want you to refinance is because for the first 10 years, you're normally paying nothing but interest. So sure, they want you to refinance. Oh, you're going to get a lower rate. Yeah, you're going to get a lower rate, but then now they get to eat more interest. Right. In a few moments, we will get as many questions as possible. We may have to close it down, but we will be here. I just want to make sure we're, we are in order. Absolutely. Go ahead, please. Okay, so I am an educator, and I am in 60 plus thousand dollars of student You're a debt. teacher, you're a future millionaire. Come on, okay. let's go, let's go. Claim it now, claim uh, it. <laughs> um, okay, so I am, I have four kids with a single income and okay. my goal is to purchase a home mm -hmm. in 2025. But I also know the debt to income ratio is pretty high with that okay. student loan debt. Okay. So I do know there's like student loan forgiveness for teachers. Absolutely. But in the meantime, I'm trying to get that plus my goal is 2025 to purchase a home. Um, with this single income, just me, myself, what are some resources? What what would you suggest my first step would need to be? Absolutely. We're going to get deeper into that in terms of extra streams of income. But first off, you got about 60 days in that summer to play with. Most teachers are extremely successful because that summer portion is where they really lock in. Renegotiate daycares. That's I'm not selling you to change your babies and put them in somewhere that you really don't trust. But that's part of it, renegotiating that. If your credit score is a 580 above, you can get a home. Expensive is 620 above. If you're willing to move out a little bit, you can actually get a USDA home yes, loan, sir. which basically means that the property is on 1.5 acres or more. It's out a little bit. It's going to be cheaper, and you're going to have a zero down payment. I would love to talk to you a little bit deeper in detail. Find out whatever fat is in the budget. I know you're doing it by yourself, and I think you're doing a real good job yeah, with four yeah. kids, and you're and you're a single mother. But there's always fat in the budget. Yes, uh, I think unfortunately, I think we're where to go. Time. They're kicking us out. <laughs> it's they're eight kicking us out. They're, they're kicking us out. They gave me the cut. It. <laughs> so this is a drop for next week. In the next three weeks, come back, ask the question. Maybe we'll do a shorter presentation. Have more Q and A. If we can bring in additional people, we'll bring in additional people. We want to make sure you get this information. Be before Thank you, you leave, before you leave, we just want to have a quick word of prayer. I also want to encourage you to bring your spouse, your children, the people you are connected with. We are just at the base level. We're going to dig much deeper into this. Some of you all have multiple properties. You have multiple streams of income, but you're not watching everything appropriately. So we want to talk about systems. We want to talk about structures, strategies and solutions.
I messed up. I know. Also, it'll also be streamed online so that you'll be able to see it on our YouTube channel as well. Just not, we're not streaming live, but it'll be there. So just bye bye. Would you gently grab your neighbor's hand? We will be right here. Test, test. We will be right here after. We want to answer every question, every question. Father, we thank you for what you're doing. Thank you that you're teaching us how to structure our finances. Your word says in Romans 13 and 8, first of all, you, you talked about <laughs> we should owe no man nothing but to love him. You called us lenders and not borrowers. You said that we're the head and not the tail. You said we'd be, be above and not beneath. Proverbs 22 says basically we would be the, that, the, that the rich rule over those who they allow to borrow from them. God flipped the script with us. I pray that you send multiple incomes and streams and strategies like never before. I pray for unexpected checks in the mail, increases in bonuses and contracts. I thank you for promotions and salaries. I thank you for holy handshakes. God, I thank you for things that we didn't even think about, funds that we put other places. I thank you for a total turnaround and an increase in growth and wealth and money markets and 401ks and so many different streams of income. Lord, I pray for safe travel over each and every person. Bring us back to the same place next week. In Jesus' name, together we're going to say amen. amen. Love y'all. We'll be right here.